Hi guys, thank you very much for joining. Welcome back. Today I'm going to read this statement. If you think I'm going to try and pronounce her surname, then you've got another thing coming. I mean, look at that. Let's just call her Elizabeth Rose. Elizabeth made this on the 16th of 1295 and it's got some great details in there. She was Craig and Donna's neighbour. She said, I lived with my husband, son and daughter at blank Gray's Essex. We live in a row of four houses at the entrance to Colshot Avenue. Our neighbours at number eight were Donna Jaggers, Craig Rolfe and their child Georgia. We have lived at a current address for about 18 months. Andy, my husband, is a car fitter whilst I remain at home with our daughter and son. Donna and Craig moved into a number eight, Colsha Avenue, about 15 months ago. We've always spoken to Donna and Craig, but I would not say we were friends or even close neighbours. At the most, we would say hello to just past time of the day. I run an Avon catalogue and on a few occasions Donna has purchased a few items. Neither Donna or Craig have ever told me what they do for a living. To be honest, I formed the opinion that Craig was a bit dodgy. Police have attended the house on numerous occasions and even taken vehicles away from this address. It wasn't uncommon for Craig to come home at all hours during the night and he was always using different vehicles. I can recall a white metro van, a black GTI Peugeot, black 190E Mercedes, a Jaguar, a Frontera and the last vehicle Craig had was a blue Range Rover. In particular, Craig had a friend I knew as Tony Tucker. Tony had a black Porsche motor car and used to live in Diamond Close, Chafford 100. Although I know of this person, I've only ever said hello as I've passed him. I know very little about Craig or Donna, although I can say that I was aware that whilst living next door, they split up. Donna left, but about a month later, she returned home. I don't know why their relationship broke up. I use a kitchen wall calendar for dates and appointments. By referring to this, I can record my movements over the last few weeks. On Monday the 4th of the 12th, about 5.45 hours, I spoke with Craig about the weather before going shopping. On Tuesday the 5th of the 12th, I left my home about 11.30 hours to go to the clinic. On this occasion, I was getting into my red Ford Sierra when I had to ask Craig to move the Range Rover to allow me out. There were two other people with Craig at this time. One was Tony Tucker. The second person was a white male, but I took no further notice of this person. From pictures I've seen in the papers, this person could have been Pat Tate, but I can't be sure. On Tuesday evening, it was around 7 o'clock in the evening, although, again, I can't be accurate with time. I remember going out to the car to get my purse when I saw a male person calling at Craig and Donna's house. There was obviously no one in. This person was a white male, average build, mid-30s. I can remember he had a red top. He was casual in dress, but was carrying a briefcase. I thought by his dress, it was unusual to be carrying a case of this description. I think it was a black briefcase. I took no further notice of this person. I didn't see any vehicle on the driveway at this time. On Wednesday the 6th of the 12th, I saw Craig around midday. I was leaving home to visit my mother's house. I saw Craig driving off in his Range Rover. At this time, he was alone. I can't remember if Craig walked to his car or if he was just driving off. I don't record anything about Thursday, although I visited my, mother, my mother's in the afternoon. On Friday the 8th of the 12th, I had callers from the press and TV and I discovered that Craig had been murdered. On Sunday the 10th of the 12th, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we had a caller who introduced himself as Bernard Lee. He gave me a calling card which recorded a company called BP Foods of Greys. This person showed concern for Donna. He asked about her location and her welfare before handing us his card and driving off in a green Jaguar XJ6 motor car. I would describe Mr. Lee as follows. White male, aged 50 years, unshaven. He was short in build and had a lot of teeth missing. He had scruffy grey hair person was wearing a brown leather jacket, dark trousers and black slip-on shoes. 
The calling card was later handed to a couple with a white BMW who had been in Craig and Donna's house. On Wednesday the 13th of the 12th, 95, had an appointment to see a friend at half one in the afternoon. Just before this, about midday, I had just returned from shopping and I was unloading my car when a male person approached me on the driveway. He asked me if I was alright and said he was looking for Donna. This pit... This person didn't seem particularly friendly. He was short, sharp and to the point. He said, where is she? I replied with words to the effect of, I haven't got a clue. He replied, when you see her, tell her Dave is looking for her. I carried on unloading my shopping. I didn't take any more notice. I have in my mind a white car. Can't say if the car was parked in the driveway or on the path outside or even if this person was connected to a white car. I would describe Dave as follows, white male, mid thirties, medium build, he had a rounded face with dark hair, the hairstyle was short, collar length at the back with a straight, star, uh, with a straight style around the sides and on the forehead, he was clean shaven and didn't wear glasses. This person had a local accent but I saw no obvious or distinguishing features. To be honest I didn't pay much attention to him. I can remember Dave wearing jeans, but I cannot recall any other clothing. On Thursday, the 14th of the 12th, I became aware of someone in Craig and Donna's house. I knocked, but no one answered. I left a note, and about half an hour later, Donna called round to our home, where we, had, where we had had a conversation about her and George's welfare. After a few minutes, Donna left. Since Thursday, there have been other callers to number 8 Culture Avenue, but... No persons have called to our home address. Right, okay, so the reason I personally find this really interesting, or it's of interest, is because of that car there, that white BMW car there, right? Now, obviously, you know me now, this is, I'm not pointing fingers here, okay? I'm not trying to suggest anything. But I'm looking at things from this angle, you know, and we're just looking at different pieces of information. You know, it's obvious that that's what's happening here in these videos. There's a white BMW, okay, and of course this could be any white BMW. But there's a, a white BMW here, it's mentioned in this, from the neighbour of Craig and Donna, okay. So, this isn't this woman guessing this isn't this woman saying oh yeah maybe i mean she she's it's fair to say that she had a, a wicked sight of everything that went on okay she says here like you've just heard that she only found out on the 8th that craig had been murdered okay so he was found on the 7th okay the news and the media all went mad on that 7th on, on the 7th yeah you, you've seen the pictures of the, the news broadcasts, the news, the journalists that surrounded Workhouse Lane and White House Farm as that Range Rover was taken out of the lane on that low loader. There were many, many journalists there. You've seen it, the cameras, the, there were news. It was a media frenzy. And that was on the 7th, okay? The names of Tony Pound Craig were released later that evening six seven on the news by nine o'clock in the evening that's for sure so with that said the media storm that came after that was mega it was they were they, now it's like detail city they want details of these three people they want to get in touch with everybody who knew them first things first get round to his house Get involved with the neighbours, obviously, you know. This woman hadn't paid, an, she didn't pay any attention on the 7th. She hadn't heard anything on the 7th. The she found out by somebody knocking on her door and telling her, you know. Not a nice way to find out, really. Although she does say that she wasn't close and she wasn't really close neighbours. She weren't for their friends or anything. Not really the best way to find out that her neighbours have just been her neighbours just been murdered, do you know what I mean? Not only is she now finding out 
about Craig being murdered in this way, shot to death. Can you imagine that? Finding out that your neighbour has just been found shot to death. She's finding out that, that about Craig and it's in, and his life now. You know what I mean? She says here, doesn't she, that she doesn't know and never has known what they do for a living. Shh, well, now what's she thinking? Can you imagine the thought she's now having of Craig and Donna? You know, after finding that out by the news and stuff. This is a massive story that's hit the headlines. And she's the neighbour. You see what I mean? She's now finding out about Donna. So she would have had the ultimate viewing of what happened with Donna in those days. And then in the, the next day, the weeks, the, the, the months that followed. It's hard enough anyway to to consider a death of anybody even if it's the ne the neighbor who's over the road you know somebody who's over the road dies of you know get, get hit, hit by a car and dying it's shocking even if they were just down the road but to be there right next door to them it's it's shocking it's even more shocking the, they're the neighbors you know what i mean my point is that she had the ultimate seat in the house, yeah, to, to, to witness what was going on with Donna. That's what I'm saying. So when she says there was a white BMW car that pulled up, there was most definitely a white BMW car. You know what I mean? She had that clear vision. That, that was, that's, it was it right in front of her. You know what I'm getting at? You know, it's not somebody down the street going, oh yeah, I, I, I saw a white car out there. Might have been a BMW. This was right outside. This was in... Uh, it was outside her house, technically. I'm just saying, I'm just said, telling you, you know, th there wouldn't have been any confusion. That's what I'm getting at. There wouldn't have been any confusion about what these cars were and who they were. She had the best seat in the house, like I said. But there was a BMW, and she says here, look, there were a couple in this white BMW. Two people in a white BMW. Somebody came up to the house, scruffy bloke. Introduced him as Bernie, Bernie Lee, of all names, got another Bernie now. White male, unshaven, very scruffy, no teeth, and he was given a, a, he gave her a calling card. Scruffy looking man, however, seeming quite concerned about Donna, and that call, the calling card that he gave was given to these people in the white BMW car. Okay, again, I must stress that BMW car could have been anybody's. I'm not pointing fingers here, but it is interesting and it does get the, the mind flicking a little bit and the thoughts flickering a little bit when we're looking at this, when we find out that Nipparellis also had a white BMW. This is from Nipper's girlfriend. He says, I am the girlfriend of Steve John Ellis and I lived with him at so-and-so Dorset. I'm a full-time student studying for a diploma in agriculture at Kingston Moorwood College. I have today been asked by Detective Sergeant Wills whether I can recall my movements, the movements of Stephen on uh, the evening of the Wednesday the 6th of the 12th 95. I can remember that he picked me up from where I'm railway station at 520 hours in the evening or thereabouts he was alone in his white bmw car i can't remember exactly but we came home together we may have called at my grandmother's house in in sanford i can remember in general terms that with the exception of thursday evening we were in around every evening of that week on Thursday evening, the 7th to the 12th, I went to a party leaving Stephen at home. Okay, so nothing sinister, nothing, you know, we're not pointing fingers, but we've got the sighting of a, a, a white BMW outside Craig's house with two people in there and Nipper has a white BMW and he also has a girlfriend. We've just been said, we've just been told that. And they do drive together. This whole statement is saying that they, they're in the car together. They are in the car together, you know. So, you know, 
could it have been Nipper and his girlfriend outside Donner's for some reason? It's a possibility because it's a white BMW car. Whether it is or not, I don't know. And that's why I can't express more than, you know, obviously I'm not pointing fingers here. But it, it's a possibility. Does say there, though, they live in Dorset, which is uh, not in Essex. I know that. But we do know, don't we, that Nipper himself did escape that. He was out of prison at this point after shooting Pat. He was in prison for attempted murder for shooting Pat. And he disappeared and went to a different part of the country. She's saying Dorset. Now, Nipper knows they've been killed. You know, could it be that, they, that he is in shock, I would imagine, if it wasn't anything to do with Nipper, of course. You know, if it wasn't anything to do with Nipper, he he would have exuded some kind of shock. You know, if he wasn't expecting it, there would have been definite shock. And he was involved and knowing that Tony Pound Craig have been killed. That gives him there now conch blanc to go back, doesn't it? It gives him that the best excuse to go back into Essex. And he could have done, couldn't he? He could have said, look, I wasn't expecting that. Go and, go and pass our condolences on to Donna, first of all. Go around and see Sarah. You know, he knew them. You know, he was friends with them at one point. Go round and pass your condolences. It could have been Nipper, couldn't it? It could have been Nipper taking that trip back from Dorset to Essex to go and pay his condolences. To, you know, to pass his respects on back to the girlfriends of these people who he was involved with. You know, he, he was involved with them. That's, he, he hated Tony Pound Craig, but... He was friends with them at one point. And you know what I'm saying? It's just that shock, horror feeling that, you know, let's go back and pass all that on. Okay. So that's the less sinister start side of things. But we've got another sighting of another white BMW or the same white BMW. Okay. So that is all it could be. And you know this. We are... I'm not finger pointing, it's just, again, I have to reiterate that it could be anybody, it could have been anybody, any other white BMW car. So we've got that one outside Donna's, who's been witnessed by the neighbour, okay? So, you know, like I said, it absolutely is a white BMW. She hasn't mistaken that for something else, some other make car. She's got a full frontal view of it we found out that nipper has got a white bmw car okay so it could have been nipper again you know what i'm saying could have been somebody else absolutely 100 percent we need to make that abundantly clear just saying okay there was a bmw there and look who had one okay i'm talking from my heart on how i feel about that i if that was Nipper Ellis outside Donner's, okay, in his white BMW car. I would, I would say that that is Nipper and his girlfriend coming back to see Donna, to see a what's happened. Is she all right? Shit, pass on the condolences. You know, p pass on the condolences and share the grief. Again, it may not have been right. Now this. Again, if this is a Nipper in his white BMW car, right? Again, it, 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 I mean, this could sway either way. It could be something a little bit more sinister here, right? Or, again, it's just like trying to find out what's happened. Okay, let me just go through this. It says, I am the above described. It's from somebody called AJT Greystone. And he made this on the 29th of the 1295. He says, I am the above described and I live at the address Overleaf. I'm employed as a commercial director of Haven Fright Services Limited at 212 Highfield, South Benfleet, Essex. On Monday the 4th of the 12th, 95, I was travelling from my home address at Felixstowe, 
to our work premises in South Benfleet. My route took me along the A130 between Chelmsford and Rayleigh Essex. Just past the premises and land of White House Farm Rettenden, I saw a white 3 Series BMW parked in a bridle way on the near side of the bottom of the hill. Since reading about these murders of three males at an area in Rettendon, I've seen flowers laid on the ground beside the entrance of the A130 of the same bridleway. The BMW was reversed into the entrance of the bridleway, but was jutting out onto the road and caused both myself and a vehicle in front of me to make a slight diversion around it. The vehicle in front was an Amtrak 12 meter articulated lorry with a curtain sided trailer on the rear. The BMW was not occupied. It was a square shaped vehicle and probably around 6 or 7 years old. It was very clean and polished and well looked after. As I passed the vehicle up the hill I saw a, a male person who was walking down the field on the near side from the direction of the large house on the hill towards the bridleway. He was about 20 yards into the field and I saw him through an opening in the perimeter fence from the road. The fence is a triple bar wooden fence and some parts you can see through. I noticed him in particular because we made eye contact. He looked straight at me. I was only travelling about 5 miles an hour just having passed the white BMW. It appeared he was walking toward the BMW. I would describe the man as follows, white skinned, European, 5 foot 10 to 5 foot 11, well built, a fit looking, early to mid 30s, short cropped, dark brown hair. He had a striking resemblance to a well known footballer called Steve Bull on Wolf of Wolverhampton Wanderers in looks and build. He had either a designer stubble or a few days growth on his face. He was wearing a military style khaki officer's jumper and a tanned leather pair of heavy lace up boots which came up about four to five inches above the ankle these are what dockers or riggers would normally wear he had a white t-shirt which which could be seen above the collar line of the jumper he was holding a pair of binoculars in his left hand which were in the case the case was dark in color i didn't see where he went as i carried on my journey i would recognize the male again I'm willing to attend court if required. Okay, so with it, let's let's forget Nipper's got this BMW, a BMW for a minute, okay? And let's just look at these details here. So we're on the fourth, okay? The Monday, the fourth, okay? So it's uh, the start of the week, and if you're going to look at this murder right from above and or, or as we know it now, you don't even have to look at it from above, just as we know it now, wouldn't you say it was a very, very well-planned, very well-executed mission? Personally, I would say it was very, very well-planned. It wasn't the spur-of-the-moment thing. This bloke, who this man who is talking about, would fit the bill, wouldn't he, of somebody who is planning something in that lane. Let's face that. He's wearing army gear. He's wearing... I, I mean, I, I can only describe it as army gear. In my mind, I'm thinking of... of like a, a, He's got binoculars. And I'm, I'm thinking Rambo, for some reason. Like, Rambo has his... Has, has his trousers tucked into his boots. You know, boots that came up halfway up to his shins. You know, and his trousers were tucked in them, for some reason. That's the way I'm finding... That's what, what I've got in my mind. He's saying five foot ten, five foot eleven, well built, fit looking, early thirties, short crop, dark hair, dark brown hair, and a striking resemblance of somebody called Steve Bull from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Right now, this is Steve Bull, uh, as you Google him. Okay, personally, I I see Pat in here. Uh, that Pat Pat Tate um, I definitely see Pat there in there but on the scale of things if this was Pat this bloke who's who's witnessed him he wouldn't be talking like that would he, he wouldn't be saying oh yeah it was uh, 
you know, she's well bit fit, fit looking. A anybody who describes Pat Tate, they're they're going, they're talking monster, aren't they? They're like very big, muscular, bodybuilder type, not, you know, well built, fit looking, mid thirties, you know. The, the the way he's describing this man, even though the resemblance is of Pat, I wouldn't say that is Pat that he's he's trying to to say. Do you know what I mean? I don't think this man has witnessed Pat Tate holding binoculars in this in this uh, in this attire. Khaki officers, jumper and tanned leather pair of lace-up boots like tanned leather lace-up boots military style is wearing binoculars you see this is it is can you see i do my best honestly to try and work out and try to look at and try and i try first of all not to think of anything that that could be related i'm, I'm trying to think of other things other reasons why people would be up there but your mind has to it has to think about people being up there i think this is the most fascinating thing about this case when you think that it's a well-planned execution right people knew this was going to happen people planned it so cast your minds back to the saturday sunday People had it in their mind that they were going to be dead on the Wednesday. That fascinates the hell out of me, that does. And they're there planning it. That shits me up, that does. Like, that really gives me the spooks, that does. Thinking about the people going up there, going up to this lane, looking around and, and planning it the, to the T. That they were gonna right bring them up to this part, this bit here. We'll have guns here, hidden here. Get them here, somewhere around this area, and we'll do the rest, sort of thing. Obviously, we're looking at the bigger picture, and we don't know what happened, and that's that's the interesting thing. But it's just these different thoughts. You know, they they, they it, it most definitely. It may have been, but in my own mind, it most definitely wasn't a spur-of-the-moment thing. If Mick Steele was involved, if Mick Steele was involved, he had been planning it since that crossover to Belgium to get Pat's money back. That's where he asked Pat. That's where he mentioned all of this to Pat. And that was what, the... the uh, was that the 17th of November? They went... Or was it the 8th? Oh no, the, the 8th was the actual cannabis deal itself that went tits up. A few days later after that, <laughs> the howl broke loose in Essex after that. Unbelievable. The timeline for all this is just crazy. That dud cannabis deal went down on the 8th. It started falling through on the 9th. Leah Betts took that pill on the 10th. She fell into a coma that night. She died six days later. Tony Pan... T Tony... Tony's birthday was on the 17th. Pat and Craig went over to Belgium with Mick Steele and Barry Dorman to get their money back on the 17th. Bernie lost his job. On the 17th, or well, he's still working, but very soon after, 17th to the 19th, Bernie lost his job. Oh, it's crazy. That whole week was madness. Should really document that, get a, a better picture of what happened. That that whole week was mad. And yeah, and like, I don't want to go off course, but just thinking that people knew. Like, see, that, but... My point is, on, on the 17th of November, Mick Steele mentioned to Pat that he had this cocaine that was coming in. That was the first inkling, according to Donna Jaggers, of course, that was the first inkling that something was going down. Something was going to happen to Tony Pat and Craig. If Mick Steele was involved, of course. Mick Steele, if Mick Steele was in, uh, involved, Mick Steele knew something was going to happen. 
on the 17th of November. He knew. That, that's where he started planning it. It's, it's hard to... If Mick Steele was involved, it's hard not to believe what Donna Jaggers was saying. Because she says that Craig told her that that's what happened. They went and got Pat's money back. And it's there that Mick told Pat about this deal of the cocaine. And, they, and, he, and Mick Steele wanted Pat to rob it. All oh, madness. But that's what Craig said. So Craig's been informed of that. Craig was there with Pat, weren't he? So he may have heard that. He may have been at that meeting that discussed that from Mick Steele. Of course, if that's Mick Steele involved in the murders, that means Mick Steele had it in his mind that he was, even before that, even well before, it must have come before that. It's like, Mick Steele, think of this. Mick Steele must have thought, I'm not having this. You're dead, Pat. I'm going to fucking kill you. You've done something, like, whatever you've done is not my problem. And you're causing a fuss. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. They went and got his money back. And as they got his money back, Mick then put it into action. Pat. Sorry about all this. Uh, we've got some. We've got thirty kilos of Colombian pure coming in. Rob it for us. Let's sort this all out. Rob it. And that's his plan then. Getting the ball rolling to carry out his own murder. He's murdering him. You know what I'm saying? Of course, if all one big if. It's just those thoughts and feelings that all of that gives. Mick Steele then goes. Has must go out and and try and congregate other people he trusts enough to get involved with all this. This person here in the white BMW, on the face of things, it would suggest, wouldn't it, that he is planning something. He's in his army gear and he's got binoculars. You know, it would just suggest that he's definitely up there planning something. And this was on the 4th as well. So if this man was involved, if... He is somebody who planned it. He's up there planning it on the 4th. And Tony Pancray got no idea. That just fascinates the hell out of me. I love that. Anyway, this is another man with a white BMW though. So let's not jump the gun again. I'm not accusing this. But if, if he's talking about Nipper here, of course. No, this man doesn't know that it was Nipper. And... We're only looking at this all these many times and all these many years ago later. But is it possible that this could have been Nipper up there? Well, it's difficult to say. Uh, I'm kind of struggling to say, yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's definitely possible that it could be. I don't know. Not of the, I don't know. I, do, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I, honestly, I just don't know. I'm not frightened of saying, yeah, absolutely, definite possible. I suppose, in a way, yeah, it's it could have been, but I'm just not feeling that it was. If it was, he's up there planning this. See what I mean? If this was Nipper, then without question, he's planning something. Which you can only say, can't you, that he was planning the murders. Anyway, look, all that just spawns from it being a white BMW. That's it. That's the bottom line of all that. We've got a BMW at Workhouse Lane on the 4th, Monday the 4th, and Nipper Ellis has got a white BMW. Could it have been him? Well, yeah, because he's, because he's got a white BMW, of course it could. What's he doing there? If he could, if it, if it could have been him, what was he doing there? He's wearing binoculars and he's in army gear. Knowing what we know that happened there and what happened between he and the people in the Range Rover that was found there three days later. What was he doing there? Planning this. I would say that's the only thing that's coming across to me. He's not up there walking a dog. He's not up there flying a kite. He's not up there getting the price list for the clay pigeon shoe in. He's not up there to go fishing. What was he using those binoculars for? 
What are binoculars? You know, to look into the distance. Could it be that he, it was Nipper and he was up there saying, look, I can see from here, from, or right, from the top of this hill here, right, get them to this point here. We don't even have to go down there. I can see it through the binoculars. Can you imagine what was going through this man's head if he was planning this? Can you imagine? Something to think about. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. I found this really interesting and I hope you do too. Take care of yourselves, guys.